Hello, it's Chris Sorensen from Companion Custom Banjos in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Last summer while vacationing in Maine, I had the opportunity to spend some time with the great banjo player and maker Jim Cox. Over the past few years, I've gotten to know Jim Cox and he's been very gracious in sharing some of his time with me as well as some of the techniques in his craft. Jim Cox is a native of Kentucky, but in the 1950s when he joined the Air Force, he moved to Maine. So now for over 50 years, Jim has made a name for himself in the banjo industry. He's probably most well known for making his high quality three ply maple rims used by many builders out there including myself. He also makes metal parts and excellent quality resonators as well as entire banjos. I'd like to share with you a few clips from our conversation that day and a walk through his shop and workspace. Let's take a look. Uh, this is Jimmy Cox. I'm in the state of Maine now. I came from Kentucky <laughs> and uh, I picked a banjo for a few years ever since I was about seven years old, I guess. I wanted to make banjos all the time, ever since I was uh, in the service, and and uh, that's why I started uh, uh, tooling up before I got, where I didn't have a job. So I had to keep a job and tool, tool up at the same time. So, banjos was my thing. Because when I, when I was little, I carried my banjo. Uh, I had to walk about a mile to a gravel road to get a ride to the radio station. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I've always been in that, see, mm -hmm. from the time I was a kid. Dad played the banjo, and we had to do our own stuff on him. He taught me how to put a skin head on a banjo. <laughs> I mentioned that once on TV. Uh, we we played we played TV over here in Portland for 13 years, uh -huh. and uh, the Ken McKenzie show. And uh, I mentioned Skin and the Cat one time on there. And gee, everybody was calling in, and he said, Ken said, "Don't mention Skin and the Cat anymore." <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Jim spent a few hours reminiscing about old times and the processes he uses to make instruments. Many of the fixtures and tool accessories in his shop were made by him. He shared with me some of his memories about getting ready to take the plunge into becoming a full-time builder. Well, I knew uh, uh, it was the tool making that mm -hmm. counted the most. Yep. If the tool is right, you can make it right. If you can yeah. read a mic. so. I guess I just had a gift. Uh, if I could see something, I could tell how I want to go about building the machine to make it. See, mm -hmm. so. Well, a lot of that came probably from from your parents' upbringing. You, if, if something broke, you had to fix it, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's why we carried building wire when we drove an A model Ford. <laughs> <laughs> They carry a wire in your pocket, you had to wire something back together. <laughs> but I tore a, an old Gibson apart, it was a Granada. And I took all the measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, he told me to take every measurement of every part and, and write it down to make sure you're right. Yep. And then make a, make a setup for each one of those. You got to make one for each one of them. So. Yeah. I, I spent about three years tooling. I bet. And well, I had the idea how to make it. I just yeah. need the machine <laughs> to make it on. So I told, told the I guy up there, so I, I don't want no grades. I want to get, <laughs> I want to, get to those machines. Yep. Did we didn't have much time to talk about banjo setup because Jim had to get back to work. But he did offer a few words of wisdom and advice. So when, when you do complete a banjo and you get it all put together, how do you how do you know what do you look for to tell you that it's been set up right? Well, I uh, I want the neck on it right. That's the most important thing. Yeah. The angle of the neck, mm -hmm. and to get that third string in the center of that banjo. Yep. If you don't, you're gonna have problems. So if you were to take a banjo, let's say someone were to give you a banjo, you know that they purchased from the store. Um, what what advice could you give them to to get the correct setup on it to get the best sound out of it? Well, usually uh, it's uh, it's the way the tone ring is put on the banjo mm -hmm. too. Yeah. See, uh, people don't have the right setup to turn the rim, mm -hmm. 
and that tone range gonna ain't gonna fit perfectly on the edge of that banjo all the way around. So you're gonna have a thick part over here and a thin one over here. See, mm -hmm. that's that that's one of the things right there that's pretty bad. So when you fit a tone ring, would you rather have it? be on there real real snug or kind of a, a loose or medium fit what do you like yeah i don't want it too snug you know uh, so it won't fall off you know yeah, yeah. i like to cut mine uh, about five thousand the, the lip about five thousands higher so the tone ring after i measure the inside of the tone ring mm -hmm. i see so it'll come down on it and then right. i i put it on that uh machine out there for about four hours and mm -hmm. vibrate it. Really? Then I take it off again and tighten it up and then put it back on there for four hours. Wow. Well, let's go out in the shop. That sounds good. That's a moon shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a funny mahogany <laughs> that they call it. That's an exact copy of Raymond Steele. Right up here? Yeah, I'm just Can you tell me a little bit about your lathe? Well, it's made in the 1800s. <laughs> wow, good stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. And you set, up, you set up your tooling just right, just how you wanted it to be done. Yeah, you got to set up. You got the most important thing is to is the way to hold the thing. See, yep, to make it round. Mm -hmm. Or you can't ever get it round. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. And I make uh, I make jaws for everything. I got jaws. See, mm -hmm. the, the plate, index plate. <laughs> wow. It's just a lifetime of tooling in here. Yeah, that's right. That's great. And you have your panograph machine over here, right? Yeah. So you, do you lay your neck in this portion here? I got my neck goes in here, and yeah, and it, it, that's a proper angle. I guess my last question would be, if um, if you were to talk to someone trying to get into the business of being a banjo builder, because there's a lot of people kind of popping up in the world now that want to do that, making open backs or resonator banjos. <laughs> no. <laughs> what What would you tell them to do? Buy their parts from me. There you go. <laughs> It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know Jim Cox over the last few years. He has without a doubt been the biggest influence on me in the way that I make banjos. And moreover, he's inspired me to pursue my passion. There's a lot more to his story than what you heard today. I'd encourage you to pick up his memoir, Five on Five from Kentucky to Maine. We have a link to it on our website at companionbanjos.com.